How's it guys, this is Davey FPL and welcome back to the Fantasy Premier League video here on my channel. And on this video, I'll be taking you guys through my most up-to-date draft as possible. Now, if you guys haven't watched my two videos before this, the first initial draft and then also kind of the best fixtures guide, you'll probably miss some of the context heading into this updated draft video. Now, as I always do, my draft video is going to start off with some talking points that might be of interest to you guys, whether that be actual kind of just news about potential upcoming doubles and that sort of thing, or just in general kind of draft building guides. I'll be touching on those first. Then I'll be discussing the draft in two different components. The first component will be all about the finances and the formation. I'm going to be discussing the price point of each individual option and why I've selected them. Then finally, to wrap up the video, I'll be going over the actual team selection of our initial draft heading into the upcoming Game Week 17. Now in this video, I'll be detailing my own draft, but please drop it in the comments down below. I want to see how your guys' drafts are kind of going. I know our initial draft might have not been up to scratch in terms of your guys' standards, but this draft definitely will probably meet more expectations as I've had more time to kind of think about it. So you guys interested to see what my draft is currently setting out to be, sit back, relax, and let's get straight into it. Now the first talking point I just want to go over as we probably have more viewers from the channel actually watching this video compared to the first two, I want to give you guys some details about how we're approaching Game Week 17 and also Game Week 18. So if you guys don't know, I've just returned from Australia on a work kind of trip, but I will be heading on to my actual holiday to Europe, and I'll be leaving before you guys actually see this video. So yes, I am actually having to pre-record these videos, and that's why they might not be as up-to-date as I probably would like, but I will try to do a deadline live stream pre-Game Week 17 and Game Week 18's deadlines. I'll therefore be back in South Africa come the Game Week 19 deadline, so don't worry about that one, but in terms of the Game Week 17 and 18 content, I'm going to be taking a little bit of a step back. So you guys might be asking where you guys can reach me, where I'll be posting my updates. Well, the usual YouTube videos will be dropping the pre-recorded ones, but I'll also be on my Twitter page, and more importantly, my Discord server. So if you guys want to get the most up-to-date kind of team transfers as I do them, you'll have to become a legend member on our YouTube channel. But as I said, don't worry if I do choose to do a live stream before the deadlines on Game Week 17 and Game Week 18's deadline. You'll get the most up-to-date team as possible, but also I'll be posting that over on Twitter. I just want to give you guys some updates about where I am currently sitting with the YouTube channel. Don't worry, the content will carry on flowing in. Definitely post Game Week 18, I'm going to be back in SA, as I mentioned, and the normal content schedule will resume. But now heading on to the first talking point relating to our drafts, the upcoming Game Weeks, it's going to be Double Game Week 21. Now, if you guys have watched the previous videos, if you don't know the doubles coming up, just go watch those. I go in quite a lot of detail, especially the fixture guide into the upcoming doubles. Even though they are quite small, they're still going to be quite valuable. Now, another potential small double game week is going to be game week 21. And the reason for this, Ben Krellen last night, actually, before I'm posting this video, he released this information over on Twitter. And he mentioned that he believes that there's a 60% chance of Arsenal versus Everton being moved to game week 21. Now, we do own those Arsenal assets already. You'll see that I own two of them in my latest draft. So at least we'll be prepared for game week 21. But if you guys aren't, there's a 60% chance that they do have a double game week. But don't worry, I'll keep you guys up to date on Twitter and also my Discord server when Ben Krillin does post these updates, as I do think a 60% chance isn't that great. But nevertheless, I always want to drop the latest news as possible for you guys, and that's the latest bit of Double Game Week news. But I'll go on to the actual updated draft. As I mentioned in the introduction, I'll be going over the finances first. Right off the bat, I will tell you guys that I managed to afford this draft with 0.1 left in the bank. So a little bit of an upgrade there from the initial draft, as I had about 1.8 million in that video. Now with that 0.1, we obviously can't do too many significant upgrades, and I guess that might be a little bit of a downside with all these double gamings coming up, as the positional rotation might not be as strong then. But don't worry, I'll go into more detail about that in the team selection coming up, which will be obviously the next talking point. So heading on to our first apartment, and I always go over my goalkeepers as a double or as a set, it's going to be Kepa and then also Danny Ward. Now with Danny Ward, I guess the only reason why we're getting him is because of his cheap price point, but actually had a pretty good run of form towards the end of the first half of the season. You guys would have known that kind of started off as a meme goalkeeper, but as the season progressed, Leicester's defense got significantly better, and he was actually getting some double-digit hauls in the last couple of game weeks. So no excuses there. If you guys don't know Danny Ward, I probably would get him in. He's so cheap, and he actually is getting a few f ball points. Now, in terms of our first choice goalkeeper, I had Sanchez in my initial draft. I've actually moved that to Kepa. The reason I went for Sanchez was Kepa wasn't in the first kind of friendly game for Chelsea, but he since has returned to training. So please do monitor the situation. Hopefully, he is going to be fit for game week 17, but if he's not, I might go back to Sanchez. Now, in terms of Kepa, if he is going to be fit and the starting Chelsea goalkeeper, there might be some question marks there about a potential Mendy playing, but I do believe Kepa under Graham Potter is the favorite goalkeeper. Now, at 4.5 million, you're getting a double game week option in the upcoming game weeks. And that's more than enough for me to select him in my squad. So let's hold thumbs because if you guys did watch the fixture guide video, Chelsea had the best fixtures over the next four and six game weeks, and therefore he's a no-brainer at 4.5 million. 
Now heading into the defensive department and we're going to be going from left to right here most expensive to least expensive the most expensive option obviously Cancelo at that left back or right back slot for Man City now there are some question marks about some potential rotation here Kyle Walker returning from that long-term injury that kept him out for the majority of the first half of the season what is his return going to mean for Cancelo and his playing time if you guys do recall the new signing Gomez was actually starting at fullback for Man City so with kind of Walker fit is Cancelo going to get more rest time but for me right now, I think that he is going to be nailed in the starting 11, but I guess when the game week comes that he is rested, he is an easy downgrade at his expensive price point. Now, there has been a little bit of debate here about which Man City defender to go for, and Akanji has been mentioned, even Akai Walker returning from that injury, but I just believe at his price point, we can afford these more expensive defenders are that trends not in our squad, and that's why I'm going for Cancelo anyways. But 100%, if you guys do want to go for a cheaper option, that's fine. Cancelo is not the best kind of attacking threat in that Man City squad, but I'm kind of going for him as a nailed option that should hopefully get us some clean sheets. Now next up is a simple no-brainer if you guys go on FPL kind of value per million. Trippi is absolutely clear at his 5.5 price point that's going to be significantly cheaper than you probably can afford him at right now as I did bring him in a couple of game weeks ago. Now Newcastle has nice figures coming up but even if they don't think that Trippier is still a great option to look at. Newcastle's defense the stats are looking pretty strong we'll go over that in a future video but for me he's a no-brainer at 5.5 million. Now the one thing I want to mention about the Newcastle defense is I think that you could also go for Nick Pope in the goalkeeper position but I'm not too fond of kind of going for that double up. The fixtures for Newcastle are good but not great and that's why I think a double up might be a little bit of a push. In terms of one Newcastle defender definitely go for Trippier as I mentioned please if you don't have him I'll probably bring him into my draft. Now the final defender I'm going to be going over right now in terms of our back three this is going to be the kind of premium back three that I'll be looking at most game weeks it's going to be another Chelsea defender. Now which Chelsea defender to go for? Reese James has been pictured in training but as far as I know it's kind of light training there hasn't been too much of an intensive session and that's all for the time being I'm actually going to be going for the cheaper Cucurella. But yes if Reese James will be back in training he looks to be good I probably will go for him but there is some concerns about potential playing time as he just came back from a long-term injury. Whereas as you guys know, Graham Potter used to coach Brighton and therefore Cucurella is going to be kind of a mainstay in his team selections, at least I hope. There's also the added fact that Ben Shaw hasn't been returning to training as of yet. He looks to be increasing his rehabilitation, but who kind of knows when he will return to training? So I think right now for me, Cucurella seems a safe option. Yes, you could go for another centre back, but I just believe his versatility might lead to more starts. So that's going to wrap up our kind of back three or more premium back threes, but I will go over the rest of the defence shortly. Then heading on to our midfield department, obviously the left-hand side means the more expensive side, so who's our premium midfielder of choice right now? Well, it's going to be Kevin De Bruyne over Salah, actually. Now, this doesn't seem to be too much of a controversial decision, however the stats and predicted points do favour Mo Salah, but I've gone for Kevin De Bruyne with the chance of those Man City double game weeks. Now, please just remember that game week 20 double isn't kind of set in stone if Man City or Spurs do get a replay in the FA Cup. That double game week falls away, but right now I do believe that it will happen. So that's why Kevin De Bruyne is going to be locked into my team at 12.5 million. I just think Man City will return to what they were doing in the first half of the season, and that's absolutely destroying some teams. Now, fixtures upcoming for Man City also do look pretty strong, and that's why even without the double game week, I probably would still go with Kevin De Bruyne. Then heading on to our cheaper kind of midfielders or more mid-range midfielders, the first one's going to be Mason Mount. He's been a mainstay over my first two drafts. I just believe a Man City attacking asset is going to be integral with those nice fixtures coming up, and I do believe that Mason Mount's the most nailed one in that selection. Now this might change as we do go through those friendly games. If he hasn't returned to training after traveling with England in the World Cup, then I might be second guessing myself. But right now, I do think Mason Mount at his cheap price point is the best option. Now, if you guys are a Chelsea fan, drop it in the comments down below. Do you believe that Mason Mount's the best asset to go for? Is maybe someone like an Obama Yanger Havertz a better asset to look at in those four departments? Now, next up, this definitely caused a stir in my initial draft video, but I'm going to be including him yet again. It's Wilfred Zaha at 7.4 million. Now I'm going to say this again and please just remember it that Wilfred Zaha is only a two game week punt. At his price point I can upgrade him to a sucker, I could downgrade him to a trossard. He's very versatile at that price point and over the next two with newly promoted sides upcoming I think that he is a steal. Now there's a big question mark about Wilfred Zaha unfortunately with his kind of transfer situation. Apparently he's not looking to renew his contract at Crystal Palace and that might cause quite a stir but if you guys do recall every time that Wilfred Zaha's contract's under speculation he always seems to do well and that's why I'm hoping that in game week 17 and game week 18 we see that form of himself. But I do know this is a controversial one because he has trolled us in the first half of the season but I'll probably be going for him for the next two fixtures. Now last up in terms of our midfield four it's going to be the most predictable option Martinelli at 6.4 million. Now he is more expensive if you guys do buy him right now but I bought him at the start of the season and that's why I'm a little bit scared about losing that value. Now I do think that you guys should be going for an Arsenal attacker at least one of them if it's going to be Martinelli if you have more money to spend and you want to go for a sucker that's perfectly fine I just prefer the Brazilian. Now I will say that Arsenal's fixtures upcoming aren't that great and I think you guys could actually get away with not owning one of these attackers but I'm going to be going for him at his cheap price point. So if you guys do recall from our initial draft video the midfield has not changed I think this midfield 4 looks pretty stacked and the only thing that I might change is actually going for a midfield 5 over a 4. 
So right now we'll be going for the three forwards and let's go over them at the current moment. The first and most expensive forward to go for is going to be no surprise. Our premium forward of choice is Erling Haaland. The Norwegian is simply too good to ignore and that's why I'll be going for him and probably captaining him over the opening couple of game weeks. I'm not going to elaborate too much on the Norwegian because I guess everyone does own him and everyone's going to captain him probably. Now here's a big switch up from our initial draft to the current draft and it's going to be Darwin Nunes at a cool 9.0 million. Now you might be asking me that Liverpool's fixtures don't look as strong as maybe other teams but I do believe with the injuries to Jota and now Luis Diaz, unfortunately if you guys don't know Luis Diaz yet again getting injured, the same injury but now requiring surgery and they're going to be out for a long amount of time. So without Jota, without Diaz, I do think that Darwin Nunes is nailed in that starting three and it's just that he starts centrally rather than on the wings. Now I guess this might be my head kind of playing tricks with me. I don't own a Salah. I still want some Liverpool coverage. I'm still scared of Salah and that's why it seems like a cheaper option and maybe even a better option. But also I might be a little bit biased here from game week 16 because if you guys do recall, it was my kind of one week punt that I brought in. Got 13 points. So he has done me well in the past couple game weeks. But a big switch up in our forward department and I actually upgraded a Martial from United. So I'm potentially losing a nice short term punt option with those lovely United fixtures for Darwin Nunes who is sometimes unpredictable. But I'm fine with that. I want some Liverpool coverage as a Liverpool fan anyways. So I think Darwin Nunes is looking like a mainstay in my drafts. Now if you guys have watched the initial draft video, you'll know who my kind of final option is. If I'm not going to be keeping Martial, I will be keeping Callum Wilson at 7.4 million. Now Callum Wilson like Trippier has good fixtures coming up for Newcastle. I think more from an attacking than a defensive point of view. And that's why Callum Wilson for me, kind of a talisman for them. And that's why I prefer him slightly over an Almiron. Now, as always with Callum Wilson, there are some injury concerns, so please just watch out and make sure that he is fit for the upcoming game week 17, because with him, as I said, you always don't know, his hamstrings are absolute cheats. Now, the last thing about Callum Wilson is that the fixtures upcoming for the medium term are pretty strong, and at his price point, we can always downgrade him to Mitrovic for that double game week punt. But even if we don't, great option to go for Newcastle or high flying, XG looks pretty strong, and he is also on penalties. So as you guys can see, in terms of our kind of team selection inverted commas, the 3-4-3 will be returning to our Game Week 17 draft. Right now, the team looks pretty stacked, but let's go over our bench options. Now, the first and most integral option, and I would recommend at least having one or two options that you guys can put faith in if they do have to come off the bench. And I personally believe that Ben White from Arsenal is a great defensive option. So he comes in at 4.7 million, worth his value in gold if he racks up the clean sheets like Arsenal have over the opening couple of Game Weeks. Now the only thing about Ben White that I'm slightly scared of is if I do have to bench him, he probably will get us some points, but we have to deal with that at the end of the day. Now you guys might be asking at that price point, there might be some other selection that you guys are potentially looking at. A lot from United could be a potential asset, but I just believe I'm going for the certainty of Ben White. He should be starting in the starting 11 for most game weeks and also look pretty good defensively. Now final two options, the first one Andreas in that midfield apartment. He's a no brainer at 4.5 million, has a double game week coming up. It's quite an attacking 4.5 and that's why I always recommend him. However, our last option, Neko Williams with 0.1 in the bank, I could look to upgrade Neko Williams to a better asset because he's lost his place to Serge Aurier, or at least he's rotating with Serge Aurier, and the defense of Nottingham Forest is pretty bad. But as you guys can see on screen right now, the full kind of starting 15, if you want to call it that, this draft looks a lot better than I think our initial draft, but you guys can comment down below. But now to wrap up the final portion of this video, I'll be going over the team selection for the upcoming Gaming 17. I mean, the price points are important enough, but the fixtures are way more important. And I want to show you guys what the current team looks like. So bottom right hand side, a reminder that we do have 0.1 left in the bank. So not a significant upgrade can be made, but we could also look to upgrade a Neko Williams to a slightly more expensive option. So talking about Neko Williams, let's go over our bench first. We've got Danny Ward against Newcastle at home. Obviously as a Callum Wilson owner, hoping that Newcastle do score there. So Danny Ward will be on our bench along with Ben White. Now the West Ham game isn't the toughest game in the ward, but I think at his price point and with the fixtures on my starting 11, he probably will be on my bench. We have Andreas against Crystal Palace, who kind of knows how that game is going to go. Then finally, Neko Williams against United away, and he's definitely going to be third place. But now heading on to our starting 11, and it's going to be Kepa between the sticks with that Bournemouth at home game. Now Bournemouth were actually quite high scoring towards the latter stages of the first half of the season, but I do have faith in Chelsea to potentially keep a clean sheet here. I'm going to bring in our defensive department because you guys will see that I've doubled up on that Chelsea defense. Cucurella also is going to be in our starting 11 and that's why I'm hoping that they do keep a clean sheet. Add to that defensive department, we have two away games, Leeds away for Cancelo and Leicester away for Trippier. Those games are quite tough from a defensive point of view, but I do still have faith in these defenses. But even if we don't get defensive returns, maybe one or two attacking returns could be on the cards for our defensive department. Then into midfield apartment and no kind of changes as I mentioned to our initial draft. So we're going through these players quite quickly. Mason Mount against Bournemouth at home, great fiction on paper. We have Kevin De Bruyne against Leeds away, who from an attacking point of view look pretty strong, but still quite a bad defense. West Ham at home for Marte looks like quite a tough game, but I mean, this is Arsenal. They're a different side this season looking pretty good. And then finally, we have Wilfred Zah. As I mentioned, those newly promoted teams, he faces Fulham at home in game week 17. So in terms of our midfield department, I'm pretty happy with this, especially with the Wolfred Zah kind of punt. Hopefully I do keep hold of him, but with the kind of news about his contract, I might ship him out. 
Then finally, our forward department, and no question marks about our captaincy for this week. If Erling Haaland's fit, he'll be our captain, heading into game week 17 with that fixture against Leeds away. We then also have Darwin Nunes away to Aston Villa. Who kind of knows what's happening with Aston Villa after sacking Stevie G? They look pretty good, but they might go back to that bad defensive form, which I do hope for as a Darwin owner. Now, please monitor the Liverpool kind of preseason games because I do expect Darwin Nunes to be fit, and it does seem like he's going to be back in training fairly shortly. And then finally, we have Callum Wilson against Leicester away. Now, this might be a question mark about should we actually have Callum Wilson as this is defense is a lot better towards the latter stages of the first half of the season. But I still believe that Newcastle can score against them, and I do see a few goals in this one. But as you guys can see, as you would expect on a wild card, the Game Week 17 team looks absolutely stacked, and hopefully that's going to lead to more FPL points. Now, if you guys did watch the initial draft video, I went over the upcoming game weeks, game week 18 and game week 19 more specifically, but I just believe that I kind of covered most of those options and their fixtures in that video, so I don't want to give you guys too much repetition, to be honest. But the biggest changes will obviously be the Darwin move. We don't have that money to upgrade a midfield apartment like a Wilfred Zaha after the two game weeks. But my current thinking is maybe taking Mitrovic in for Callum Wilson, then using the funds to upgrade Zaha to Saka if Arsenal do get that game week 21 double. Other than that though, I could just simply do Zaha to Trossard after the two game weeks, as Brighton fixtures look pretty strong. But this is going to kind of summarize my initial draft or my most up-to-date draft, but comment down below what your guys' drafts are looking like. Do you have any different selections to my own team? Put them in the comments down below if you think they're better than my team selections, and your drafts are probably looking slightly better than mine, to be honest. But this is basically wrap for today, guys. Hopefully you did enjoy it. Please don't forget to like if you did, and subscribe if you haven't subscribed yet. And I'm going to see you guys for more content or pre-recorded content coming up in the next few days. But otherwise, make sure that you guys do follow me on Twitter or on my Discord server. But I'm going to sign off. Today the FPL, and I'm out. Cheers. Bye.